make some notes as well. But so in 2015, I'm sitting, I'm here in this stream, and I'm cutting a loaf of bread, and I say that will be enough for today. And I woke up immediately, and I heard the words audibly. Now this doesn't happen all the time, so forget you know you know it was really 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 rare. I heard um, five years, and. I knew that something was going to happen in connection with the, what it represented symbolically from the kitchen to five years. And bread represents the word of God, uh, the, the, the work of God. My bread is to do the work of God. It represents ministry. Yeah. All the bread and provision to do it. Yeah. But that's really what it was saying. And in five years, and then I said, what does that mean, Lord? And I saw a picture of a, a news reporter for BBC that I knew worked for the BBC, but I didn't know his name, and I didn't know what it does. I just know I'd seen him on television. And so I Googled um, news reporters, BBC, on an image search, and, and he came up there, and he was Tim Wilkinson, Tim Wilcox. Clicked his profile. He was a BBC world news reporter. So he reports to the world. And when I saw, and when I saw this face, I heard, I saw the word, I saw it, I saw his face, and I saw the word global. Yeah. And I knew that what was happening there from the kitchen, which is the local, God was going to do something starting in five years that would take it from the, from the local to the global. Mm. So now I'm on holiday. It was in January 2015, uh, the first week of January. Uh, I'm on holiday, and I'm uh, working out on a trend. I'm... I'm it, uh, um, I'm in Sp uh, Spanish holiday resort. I mean, it's in Tenerife. So I, I'm, and I go down to the gym in the morning and I'm flicking through the channels on the treadmill because I have a TV thing to find a, 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 an English channel that would, I could watch to take my mind off the monotony of <laughs> pounding this thing for 40 minutes or whatever it was. And I click it and I come to BBC World News. And there's Tim Wilcox presenting. Oh. Uh, a program, and do you know what the program is presenting? Because he's sitting and it was behind him, the name Global. I nearly fell off this thing, you know. And I, and I knew that in five years, something would happen that would take the reach and the ministry from the local to the global. So here we are, 2020. Can't go to church, but we've been forced to go online. Yeah. And, and, the ministry is now going all over the world. Yeah. And I, and I, 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 there was a, there was a, when Delirious produced their song about 15 years ago, and it came from nowhere to number 10 in the charts. Do you remember this? And the BBC One DJ said, this is Pop's best kept secret. And they came from nowhere into number 10 and everybody heard them. Now, here's the thing. Um, I think that the UK church is one of God's best secrets. I was on the board of the European Alliance for a number of years. Yeah. Let me tell you this. The European church is in a desperate place in comparison to the health and the maturity and the unity and the love mm and the missional effectiveness mm. and the power of the spirit and the teaching. I don't mean evangelical teaching, but how we integrate postmodern teaching, how we do supernaturally natural, grounded pastoral, the prophetic. Mm. It's, a, it's, it's light years in, you, you can't compare it. We are so rich, we're so healthy. I'm mm. grateful for North American church. We're so grateful for it. We, we've yeah. been so enriched by it, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, there is, but there is a contribution in terms of postmodern evangelism, relational church, not drive-through church. Not that every church is like that, because there's a lot of churches that are community in the States. We know that. Yeah. Uh, but relational church, postmodern evangelism, high levels of unity across the denominations. You don't get that very often yeah. anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Purity. It, we are a healthy church. Yeah. And there is a, and we are, we are, a, we are a one of God's best kept secrets. And we have our contribution to make in terms mm -hmm. of discipling 
the nation. So when it goes all over the preach the gospel, make disciples, we make disciples of the converted. Yes. We have a discipling contribution to make to the global church out of what God is doing with us in secret. Yeah. And because we, ha- we are not wealthy in the UK, so most global reach, you've got to be very resourced. So most global reach around the world comes from the mega churches are very resourced that they can actually do it. Yeah. Um, right? Yeah. We don't need that now because we can do it from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because cause, cause the reach we're having now and the and the overseas interest in what's happening, people going online, because exactly. we're all, it's totally changed. Yeah. We can do it in the kitchen, yes. from the local to the global. And we have uh, the UK church, because I believe because of our health, it's not perfect, but it is healthier, has a contribution to make. Yeah. I think what God is doing in Wales is a contribution with our love and the unity. Here we are, two national leaders talking together. Like yeah. We have a contribution to make. Yeah, yeah. There's no competitive. We want one another to win. We're in collaborative mission. We, we yeah. can't. So, yeah. so that's the one thing. Yeah. But the other thing, the stats are, here's, here's some stats, right? That's a recreation of uh, discipleship, a recreation of mission. I'm saying this right. Um, in, uh, let, me, let, let me just bring this up. You know what it's like when you go to a conference and somebody shares some stats that are encouraging and you feel really discouraged because it accentuates how your struggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd, Not that yeah. you don't want them to do well <laughs> and, and you're really pleased for them. But because yeah, yeah. it's not linking hard for you, you battle with this, I'm really pleased for you, but it just makes me feel like... Yeah. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, you know, and it and it, it, it it's you've got to work through your own pain in it. It's not it's not just it's pain it is because because of your passion for the work of God and the people of God that God's given you to. You understand that, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So when I share this, I, I don't want it to come across in a way that causes any discomfort because I'm absolutely honest now. This is nothing that we have done. There are some. I'm going to give you some stats now that have just that are true for anybody, I think, that can be true for anybody, because this hasn't come through reputation, it hasn't come through the work we've done, it hasn't come through our people witnessing, it hasn't come through a great meeting. These are stats of people who don't even know us. You know, just, yeah. just being online. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In the past three days, on our website, for Alpha, this isn't going to, this is why I need to qualify it so it doesn't cause any pain. Because I, I just want to make a point that encourages I mean this with all of my heart. Yeah. On our website, it's not coming who are, who's Cornerstone Church, who are Jill and Sarah, who are the leadership team, what do you believe, what's your church service like, where do you live, can I come and join you? But yeah. Just go into our website, just go into Alpha, our Alpha page, to yeah. find out, which will be, the vast majority will be unchurched people or non-Christians. Yeah. 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 Um, in the last three days, have 602 visits to, wow. to our Alpha page. Last three days. Now, in the last month, we've had 5,057 visits. Last month. I, I, you need to understand now, I'm just trying to say it as honestly as I can. This is not because anybody knows us. Yeah. yeah. They're seeking God. Yeah, they're just fine. It, it could be anywhere in, yeah. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not coming to find out about our church. They don't give two hoots about it. They're going to the Alpha page. Yeah. It's about recreating mission. Yeah. And then on our Cornerstone Facebook page, which is also very telling, rather not, so that's just our website. But on the Cornerstone website page, there's been 724,000 views to our Alpha page on our Facebook, 724,000 wow. in the last month. That's phenomenal, isn't it? Now, what I want to say to you, right, friend to friend, leader to leader, and I mean this with a sincere heart, that has nothing to do with how good we are doing this cornerstone. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's, no, we don't have that many people in, Swan, in Swansea, you know. Yeah. No, it's true. It's got, it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with our reputation, how good our witness is, how good our service is, how good our branding is. It's yeah. just two things. We've got a platform. Yeah. And we've got a, 
an effort. <laughs> so just a page yeah. and a platform. Yeah. And it's the non-Christians yeah. who are doing the coming and the searching and the work. It's got nothing to do with this. It's just a you know, there's been something that's been stuck up there online yeah. so that people can, the fish can come and take a bite. Wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so what I'm challenged about is this, this whole thing of the recreation of our ministry to disciple nations. Yeah. We have a contribution to our mate. And now, from the kitchen to the globe, we can go there. Yeah, yeah. If we put the resources and the effort and the thought and the time, and when we come out of lockdown, we go, oh, great, we can go back to normal now. No, thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And secondly, in terms of our missional reach, yeah. evangelism, which isn't discipleship evangelism, yeah, but discipleship is something that we need to complement it with. Yes. When you're looking at that, we don't want to neglect the face-to-face -face by any means. We, when we get back, we want to do face-to-face -face incarnational as much as we can. But mm. we don't want to realize that there is a new highway, like the Roman roads and the Koine Greek, which is the mm. route and the language of travel, of, of choice, mm. for anybody under 40 now, around the globe. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Does that make... What do you think? Does that... Ah, it's mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing. But that... that that is something that, that is just, you know, just been sort of growing really for, 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 you know, for our understanding, just, just dipping our toes in locally, yeah. like, like you, I mean, I think um, you, you, the reach and influence is slightly different, but it, but it is exponential compared to what we used to do. So and then if you look at us then as a movement, we've just done, you know, a weekend. And it, I mean, it, there's, there's people from all over the world connecting um, and people who will continue to want to connect. Yes. And, and so it, it is a, an amazing opportunity. I, I, I just, you know, while, we, while I've just got this opportunity to, you know, we, we, just, we had um, Pentecost weekend last, last weekend. And I, I, you know something every year we we celebrate the, the birth of the church if you like the the, the 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 holy spirit coming and we celebrate this thing every year and we always have a great service don't we but something just leapt in my spirit this week this last weekend it was almost like we've we have had another pentecost <laughs> you know what i mean not just celebrating the pentecost of 2000 years ago we've had another pentecost and i i was ta talking to leaders yesterday and i I'd, I'd had this sort of um, um, thought for, for quite some time, actually, about um, Elijah and Elisha walking together, um, you know, as Elijah is departing. And we know that Elijah is caught up, and there's a, there's a time where kind of Elisha's just standing there, and there's nothing, right? There's nothing. Uh, he's kind of broken, and there's not much going on. And then, what falls from from on high is 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 uh, Elijah's coat. Mm. The anointing mm. remains. Everything else goes. Mm. Everything he was grieving over goes, but this coat arrives, and he puts it on. And I thought, Very my good. goodness, it feels like that moment Very that good. we're just standing. And I just felt the coat's just landing. Very the anointing has landed on us as a, you know, as as, a, as individuals, as movements, as streams and denominations, the church worldwide. It's like it's the Holy Spirit's just come, and there's going to be released now. We know that there's a journey, but where does it, where does a Elisha go to? He goes into community, mm. straight into community, and brings healing into community, mm. and and I think that's the the such a such a. The, these things that are happening, we're connecting. Well, well, everything's up in the air at the moment. How do we disciple? Get into the community. Yeah, yeah. And this is where the transformation of community is more going to be our focus rather than building a building. Sunday morning meeting. Yeah. We have been, I think what's happening is almost like we, it's been fasted out of us. We've been fasted out of us. Yeah. And it is, it's like, it's like that. Like there's a little bit of grieving for people, and you know, and, and 
you know but the world we go back to is not the world we left in a sense is it it's like a, a, all wilderness experiences are like that aren't they you don't go back to exactly the same spot and um yeah. you, you 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 go back to the same place but it's changed yeah. everything's changed and and there is there is a there is you know there's there's challenges but the opportunities way out way the the challenges don't they you know and it's not that we won't gather and meet but i just think we won't be addicted to it in the same way <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's interesting i had a chat with some some of um the guys on the nlt this morning that that, that helped um you know organize and, and and run next online last weekend and um it, it, it was you know the, some of the comments that were coming you know were great and some were a little bit troubling mm. Because it was almost like it felt like, oh yeah, let's do this every weekend. Mm. You know, if we had this, we'd be okay. Mm. And and that's that's the complete opposite effect that we want. We what we want to do is empower people to say, actually, I have everything I need. Mm. You know, uh, uh, you know, I am who I am by the grace of God. I am who I am in Jesus, and I have the Holy Spirit, and all things are possible. And going create something you know the, the space is big the opportunities are great mm. you have everything you need in your hand go and do that instead yeah. of that idea of being sucked back into yeah. something that's comfortable and big and you can hide yeah. and 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 then the kickback on that was well guys you, you, you oh they said ivan you, you you realize though that the big thing for us is that they a lot of people recognize the strength in us being a family and so I said, yeah, I, I get that totally. And I want us to be a family, but I don't want us to be an incestuous family. Mm, mm. I don't want to be a, an exclusive family. I want us, you know, that kind of all embracing, yeah, yeah. you know, unity, diversity house, you know, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So the, yeah, you, there are challenges to it. Community. Your family that's actually is part of community. So, you, you know, we're part of community here, but we've got our neighbors and, you know, that there's community and a family with the families like our mm. denominations have to find their place. Yeah. Part of the community, which is other families or collective. And that's where you can do more and celebrate, you know, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that, I, I, I think you touched on it earlier on, you know, that, that, that we're beginning to model something in the UK that is becoming worldwide. And we're, we're feeling the effects of that, just reaching out to people, you know, and, and seeing them respond so positively, you know, and, and it's just great, right? Because they don't have to jump on a plane. They don't have to um, spend copious amount of hours, you know, to get somewhere or prepare for something. You can ask them to do something and they can do that in the comfort of their own home and, and they can, and they give it. And it is the, because the gift is them at the end of the day, isn't it? You know, the, what, and what, what they bring and, and to be able to do that now and to pull that resource is just phenomenal. So that idea of the, the kind of, you know, this kind of global village, you know, the, the, the world has talked about that for a long time, kind of economically, you know, but actually mm. now it's become that a reality for the kingdom in a sense, you know, that sort of community of belonging around the world that you can connect. Yeah. And I think there might be ways we can help one another as well, because I'm thinking like with some of those stats, you go like Alpha, you know, we piggybacked on Alpha because they're resourced. And, but there are a lot of local churches, smaller churches, unresourced churches, that one in terms of money, but also in terms of know-how. I think, well, I'd love to respond to this, but I just don't know how to. But collectively, out of our friendships, we could possibly explore how we can create platforms and resources and mediums which which it can be localized, so it can be embedded. So we've got Alpha Page, but actually it's driven into the local church. Yeah. Because we've been into the local, so you can contextualize it and actually benefits. And, 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 you know, you as a local church might not have the resources to do it, me as a local church, but collectively we might be able to draw on the skills that we have some kind of um, collaborative resourcing en engine that can help local churches that could never do it for themselves no it's interesting i was talking to someone uh, the other day and, it, and it's not because they can't do it for themselves but they are just in a season where they're they're, they're struggling um some some stuff going on at home and and various things and 
and um, and he said to me, he said, oh, it'd be great just if we had a bank of resource, you know, that we could just tap into. And I thought, what a great idea that is, you know, to be able to to put together, you know, sort of, and 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 we could we could do that um, from from a, a network that is worldwide now. You yeah, can bring yeah. the very best into yeah. your into your context. Yeah, no, which, yeah. Is, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. Um, it takes the pressure off of leadership to have to feel they've got to just turn things around and turn things out, but just, but actually be becoming more of a facilitating yeah. yes. leadership yeah. rather than having to feel we've got to do yeah. it. More. Leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Empowering, giving it away. Yeah. 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 So the, you know, this, this, I think it comes from the shift. I, I, I think we talked about this last time, but the, the shift of leadership here, church there, and if we put church there, leadership here, so yeah. undergirding, yeah. you know, supporting, empowering, releasing, rather than feeling that we've got to kind of just do everything, control everything, you know, have everything neat and tidy. Um, so it does, as I said last time, create the opportunity for holy chaos, you know, but um, after all, it's his church, not ours, so that's fine, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, this is chaos. I mean, who? No, <laughs> nobody would have ever voted for this no well you couldn't imagine this stuff could you that no, this would have been possible you couldn't even imagine it's, it's, it's i think it's going to be one of the best purifying and soul restoring experience opportunities the church has had for decades i mean we're talking about i mean i mean not just decades thousands yeah millennia <laughs> yeah seriously yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we, if we as the global church got together and said, why don't we all close our meetings down for like three months, six months, yeah. five months, and and we just stopped and said, so much of the industry and the machinery and the day to day stuff of church that we, you know, have to just keep going, get stopped. Yeah. I don't think you would get a local church that would agree to it very often, let alone a whole. No, I know. I know.